Yo, 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 yo. What's up, all you burner stoners and potheads? This is Weedman420 with the Weedman420 Chronicles. How are all you v -v -v vipers doing out there, Mrs. Weedman? Mr. Weedman. How the hell are you? I'm great. Great? I think so. Why? Because mm, we're recording. There you go. <laughs> great answer. You like that answer? I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Since we're doing the show, we got to smoke, right? Yeah, we do. So, hey, everybody out there in the world, hopefully you're smoking some big fat doinks while you're listening to the show. Mr. and Mrs. Weed Man are going to smoke. We need it. I'm ready. You ready? We are oh, smoking yeah, Nightmare OG that was grown by our good friend, Earl217, on Instagram, or Big Earl, as we call him on the show. We are smoking Nightmare OG. is an indica-dominant hybrid, a 70-30 strain, created through a potent cross of infamous OG18 and White Nightmare strains. The powerhouse bud packs a hard hitting, it says here 28 to 30 percent. I don't know what this strain is. Uh, level into each tiny little nug, a relaxing full body effects will leave you dazed for hours on end. Be gentle with that, Mrs. Weed Man. The Nightmare OG <laughs> high creeps up on you, hitting you a little while after you first toke before launching your mind into a little state of cerebral energy. This feeling is very buzzy and will leave you unfocused, <laughs> which Great. can cause cause anxiety in some users if you're not careful. <coughs> Lightly. Uh, <laughs> as your mind is uh, catapulted to a new dimension of bliss, sounds like DMT, <coughs> your body will be dragged down into a numbingly relaxing body high that leaves you couch locked and immovable for hours on oh, end. <laughs> How many hits did you hit? Or might kick you under the table if you start falling asleep while we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> or if you start, you know, like sometimes you get in that like oh, yeah. super mellow, <laughs> low talk. I'll only take, I'll start with one hit and see how the effects okay. are. Thanks to these uh, hard hitting nighttime effects, Nightmare OG is often chosen to treat conditions such as AD or ADHD, migraines or headaches, depression, chronic stress, and pain. This bud has a lemony pine flavor with hints of fresh spicy berries on, ex on each exhale. The aroma is very similar with a woody citrus overtone. Nightmare OG buds have fluffy, frosty, minty green nugs with fat um, orange hairs and tiny white crystal trichomes. The effects is body high, cerebral, energizing, relaxing, uplifting. The symptoms it relieves is chronic pain, depression, migraine, stress, ADD, and ADHD. Flavors are berry, lemon, pine, and spicy. Any of that? I think I got the spicy and the berry. Gotcha. And then the aromas are berry, citrus, herbal, spicy, sweet, and woody. Nice. And that is Nightmare OG, grown by our good friend. I'll take a little more just to check. <laughs> Big <Earl. laughs> uh, On Instagram, Earl217, who I do the uh, grow hour with, which we just recorded last night, too. Great episode on nutrients. So I'm going to toke this Nightmare OG. And I'm going to let Miss Weed Man say one or two things or tree, whatever <laughs> she feels like talking about. Go well, for it. Well, we have it. an exciting event coming up uh, with Eight Decades. We are um, invited to be a vendor at Rise Mundelein. So in Illinois here, um, we have a couple consumption lounges. This is the first legal consumption lounge. It's attached to Rise uh, Dispensary. And so they're doing a little vendor event. It's mm -hmm. actually the dispensary is recreational, <coughs> but on Saturday they're also opening their medical uh, portion of the dispensary. They're becoming medical. <coughs> Good for them. And then they're doing this big event, like a big kickoff. So it's fire and ice if anyone's in the area. They're going to have glass blowers. They're going to have ice carving. They're going to have Us. samples. Eight decades. Have vendors. <laughs> Eight decades will be there. It should be fun. You can so, come meet Mr. and Mrs. Weedman. Yeah. Ask us some stuff about the podcast, too. We'll be there. Handing out some four. stickers and some stuff like that. And I don't yeah. know. Yeah, it'll be Should fun. Should be fun. I'm excited. Food truck. I think coffee truck and donuts. Nice. And Who doesn't like donuts and coffee? Fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it should be good. We'll be there noon to four, right? Noon to four. Nice. And come. then there's other things happening. I think from five to eight, there's the glass blowing, or five to six or something like that is the glass blowing. But the vendor portion and... The majority of stuff. Anyway, look at our story, and you could see it yeah. on the eight decades. Yeah, we'll uh, post page. it all week yeah. long, and we'll post you know. pictures on on uh, the day of. We'll post all sorts of pictures. Yeah, we're super should stoked. Be fun. Yeah, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, I've been to that Rise Mundelein smoking lounge. It's a lot of fun. It's nice. 
Yeah. Yeah. To where you just sit in a bar like atmosphere and smoke weed and they bring you munchies and they bring you, you know, stuff to drink, no alcohol, but stuff to drink, you know, and they're really good and gracious there too. And you can buy cannabis right at the bar counter. Hmm. They have a register right there. That's fucking dope. Can you come in off of the street or you go into it from the dispensary? I think there's another there's another entrance. There's one entrance that goes in there and then one takes you to uh to basically where you can purchase your, your cannabis. And it's actually cool. You walk through the history of cannabis, like the marijuana tax act you get to read and they have a oh, whole cool. mural and stuff. It's pretty dope. And then uh, there's like a big vestibule, like lobby area with tables. It used to be an old bar or restaurant, so there's like hmm. it's like they kept that atmosphere. And then you have like uh, the med side of things, and then you have the recreational side of things, and uh, where you go and purchase. And then down another hallway is the consumption lounge. So it's actually a pretty big place. Hmm. And the consumption lounge is dope. They have a VIP consumption lounge where you get it's a private room. And then they have the normal, like, where you would sit out. Like, if you not... lived up there, could you go there yeah. daily? Oh, yeah, if you wanted you to. You could. Yeah, and hang absolutely. out. It, it, absolutely. Absolutely. Like absolutely. Yeah, it's like a bar. And you, tip, you tip right. the bud tenders. They, they, oh, cool. They come out and bring you different apparatuses, too, mm-hmm. which is dope. That's where I first tried the Zencoat. Uh, oh. And uh, they bought that out. Unbelievable. That sold me on that. I got to try, like. Can you bring your own weed in? No. Only if you if like if you purchased, can you, you bring? You can open it up in there. In and, there, yes, in the consumption lounge it. only. Okay, so their weed. Yes. Well, it's you, the the dispensaries, whatever you buy. Right. So well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. So packaged. Uh, weed. Yes, and then you can open it at the table, and they give you rolling papers, they give you grinders, and you can hmm. the whole back of the bar is all different smoking apparatuses, bongs and puffcos and, and zencos. You can smoke from them. Yeah. Wow. That's it's a great really concept. Cool. It's fucking awesome. They did it right. They did it right. Whether you like Rise GTI or not, it doesn't matter. They did that they fucking did it right. right. It's so cool. I mean, like to be able to, to get the experience to go to a, a a cannabis smoking lounge and be able to smoke at your own leisure and have service is pleasurable. It's nice. It's fucking awesome. It's fucking. I'm jealous because I would love to open up something like that one day. Um, but it's pretty dope. So uh, I think it's an awesome concept, and I hope we see more throughout the state of Illinois and actually through everywhere. I think smoking cannabis lounges, coffee shop lounges should be everywhere, just like you see in Amsterdam. Right. You know, eventually you could buy mushrooms there, too. Mm. <laughs> so, um, you ready to get the show started? Yeah. Let's, let's get do it going. this. This was an article I've held for a, a, a little bit, um, but I thought it was very interesting. Cannabis with enhanced amounts of THC. CBG, which is the mother of all, all cannabinoids, and terpenes. And this percentage was THC at 17%, CBG at 25%, terpenes at 30%. Researchers found a way to do it. Now, we know it's genetically modified to be able to do this because I don't know of anybody that has actually grown a plant from seed to soil to growth to be able to do this. So there's got to be some kind of genetically modified thing going on with the plant. But we've talked about stuff like this in the past where eventually they can grow or strain specifically for what your needs are. We've read articles Mm -hmm. about that before. Mm -hmm. So this is probably the start of it. Can a cannabinoid content in a cannabis plant be manipulated? And if so, how much? According to new report research at a lab of Professor Alexander Sasha Van Stein or Steen at Hebrew University of Ravot, Israel, have engineered medical cannabis strains containing 20% more THC, reported the Jerusalem Post. The achievement made possible with financial support and partnership with uh, Mariana Bioscience LTD could help create new strains and boost crop yields. What happened? Researchers at the Robert H. Smith facility, a uh, faculty of agriculture, food and environment department, enhanced the amounts of THC by nearly 17% CBG levels by almost 25% because most of the time the CBG is out of it or you might get like a half a percent or 1%. So I, I love CBG and, we, and you are going to be talking about that mm-hmm. next. And this is right. the reason why I did that was because it is such a phenomenal cannabinoid and there's no psychoactive effect with that or very minute or if not none at all but it's such a head to toe body high to where it just helps so nice so I'm, I'm looking forward to the article you're going to read Mrs. Weedman levels by almost 25% 
of CBG and terpenes by 20 to 30 percent. The stated goal behind the study was to discover a procedure that could interfere with the biochemical pathways in the cannabis plant, leading to higher or lower production of active compounds. The researchers accomplished this by manipulating a plant based virus that had been first been neutralized so that it would not harm the plant and then manipulating it to express the genes that influence the production of active substances in cannabis plant, according to the Jerusalem Post. I just read an article about them doing that with cancer cells. They got a virus and they manipulated the virus to attack the cancer cells and it's working. Hmm. Just read that too. So that's awesome. This represents an innovative use of these tools. Are you feeling cerebral high right now? You're staring yeah. out into like the lights. I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel great. I feel great. I'm not saying no. Yeah. Fucking this fucking high is wonderful. I'm listening, but I'm definitely like in La La Land over here. <laughs> um, next, we developed an innovative technology based on infection with the engineered virus to facilitate facilitate chemical reactions that increase the quantities of desired substances. Oh, you're rubbing your eyes. You're in trouble. You ain't gonna be able I to stop. So good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. You're big. Good job, Earl. I'm like in like Oh yeah. Uh, I don't even have words. I'm smoke. I'm 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 definitely not like... having I'm definitely not having nightmares on this stuff. This stuff is amazing. It's pretty mellow. Yeah, it's pretty good. In collaboration well, with <clears throat> Mar uh, Mariana Bioscience LTD, we examined the ineffective plants and found that the levels of substances in question had indeed risen. Why it matters. According to the Jerusalem Post, in the first time scientists have managed to manipulate the level of active compounds in the cannabis plant, these studies' results will be valuable both to industry to increase the yield of active substances and to, to medical researchers to cultivate and develop new strains for medical cannabis users. He added that the further research and experiments are ongoing and the results are expected to be completed over the coming months. That's big. It's, it's I mean, I don't know how people out there feel about genetically modified organisms or plants. Not a lot of people are against it. I mean, there's a shit ton of it out there. We probably eat most of it all the time. Everything's been genetically modified today, some way, somehow. I mean, but to be able to get somebody the medicine they need with the specific ranges of what they're looking for, I'm for it. Am I, am I for GMOs? If it's for medical purposes to help a patient, yes. But if it's for me to put my body to eat, I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm eating it every day. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we try to do as best we can. But so I, I, it's not that I'm for it or against it. I, I have no choice. Or you have to, like, look for it. And it's very hard to go to a regular grocery store and find... And it's also non-genetically modified or, uh, stuff is very expensive nowadays, mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm dragging this on a little bit because I want to make sure you're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. This is, this is, I'm ready. This is a good article. It's a good topic. I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. You got this. I got it. All right. So CBG. Yep. Like I just talked about in the last article, I've talked about it in some pre previous articles. The mother of all cannabinoids. <laughs> the, so, so to me, this being a mother, and a mother's a healer, Mama. a protector, Mama. love, yep. kindness, but also could put you in your place when you need it. Yeah. But, but that comes last. Everything else is healing, nurturing, loving. The mother of all cannabinoids. Okay. This is Weed Man. Tell I'm, us about it. Yep. This is what you will need to know about the healing benefits of CBG. Cannabis is an extremely complex plant, and it contains many more cannabinoids than just THC and CBD. How many cannabinoids do you think the plant contains? So far, more than 60 cannabinoid compounds have been discovered, and cannabigerol, can, cannabigerol? Cannabigerol, there you go. CBG, is one of them. CBG is a non-psychoactive cannabinoid that can help treat multiple medical conditions, diseases, and illnesses. Although THC and CBD are two commonly consumed cannabinoids, CBG 
is gaining more popularity and attention due to its medicinal value. Let's discuss more about CBG and how it can positively impact your life. Here's the background. It's important to know that CBG is the non-acidic form of CBGA, and CBGA is the parent molecule from which several additional cannabinoids are produced. Once a cannabis plant fully matures, the majority of the CBG within the plant is already converted into CBGA. As a result, CBGA turns into other cannabinoids. Despite this conversion, CBG is often referred to as the stem cell or parent of other cannabinoids. In 1975, researchers discovered that CBGA, the acid, the acid form of CBG, was the first cannabinoid formed in the cannabis plant. Mother, <laughs> tell, tell your, your children, children not to walk my way. <laughs> Based on limited Mother! <laughs> Based on limited research findings, it appears that CBG works with other cannabinoids to provide synergy and balance to the cannabis user. It's also believed that CBG can partially counteract the cerebral high associated with THC consumption. I got a cerebral high right now myself. <laughs> which is similar to CBD's abilities in this regard. So CBG's medicinal properties and benefits. Uh, before learning about CBG's medicinal properties, it's essential to know that CBG is non-psychoactive, non-impairing, and non-intoxicating. It can act on the body's central nervous system without creating a psychoactive high. Therefore, users don't have to worry about feeling high after consumption. Not only does CBG contain antibacterial, antimicrobial, and antiseptic properties. It's good for the poops. <laughs> but it also holds efficacy in battling against MRSA, which is methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Damn, Ooh, sweet big man! Word. Focus. Big this words. strain makes you focus. <laughs> Specifically, in a 2008 study, CBG demonstrated its effectiveness against MRSA. In addition, one 2009 review article found that CBG and other cannabinoids can slow the progression and growth of various tumors and cancer cells. Due to CBG's ability to inhibit the growth of cancer cells and tumors, this cannabinoid shows a significant promise in helping treat different forms of cancer. That's amazing. Amazing. Similarly, in There's recent years, in those yeah, CBG was found to be an extremely active neuroprotectant, especially regarding Huntington's disease. It has been discovered that CBG can help protect neurons, which can be useful in treating many neurodegenerative diseases. Aside from these benefits, CBG has been shown as, a significant, as having significant potential for helping treat glaucoma. In particular, it can reduce intraocular pressure when acting as an effective vasodilator and increasing fluid drainage from the eyes. The medicinal benefits don't stop there, though. CBG also contains anti-inflammatory properties, which could help treat symptoms related to inflammatory bowel disease and other inflammatory-related issues. This cannabinoid can reduce inflammation by targeting specific molecules responsible for inflammation, including pain syndrome, cancer, and irritable bowel disease. Dang. CBG's mental health benefits. Furthermore, there's more. Now let's discuss the non-physical, I'm sorry, now let's discuss CBG's non-physical benefits. Okay, mental health benefits. For starters, a 2016 report showed that CBG could be an alternative form of treatment for anxiety and depression. Thus far, CBG's anti-anxiety properties have been revealed through different research findings, but more research needs to be done. Additionally, since CBG can block serotonin receptors, this suggests a potential role for this cannabinoid to help treat depression. CBG also possesses the ability to inhibit the uptake of the brain's GABA. GABA, GABA. GABA is often referred to as the amino acid that acts as a neurotransmitter within the central nervous system and also calms the system down. 
GABA can block nerve impulses, and when GABA is inhibited, it can result in lessened anxiety and muscle tension. Thus, it's believed that CBG can provide anti-anxiety and potentially antidepressant effects. This is like magic. This, you know what this, this is? cannabinoid. Are you done? It's, no. You still got more? There's more. Tell us about it. Additional medical. There's more. There's more, more medical properties. Aside from the many medical benefits mentioned above, it even contains analgesic properties, which can help treat numerous diseases and illnesses. Now rewind over a decade to when one two hundred. I'm sorry. Now rewind over a decade to when one. 2007 study was conducted, which revealed that GBH, or I'm sorry, I don't know what GBH is, <laughs> CBG. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck I don't know. you just I, I'm like having a little moment right there. <laughs> I don't even know G, GBH, GBCB, DBDB. I was like, what? I think it was anxiety about this word that I'm not sure if I can pronounce. I knew it was coming up. Spell it. <laughs> Spell it out. All right. Uh, revealed. Okay. Let's go back. Now, rewind over a decade to when one 2007 study was conducted, which revealed that CBG yeah, right. inhibited keratinocyte. There you go. Or skin cells proliferation. So ker- keratinocyte proliferation. This suggests a significant role for CBG aiding in the treatment of skin disorders, including psoriasis. That's huge. In general, uh, though, CBG can simplify the making of natural skin moisturizers and could be used to combat dry skin and other skin disorders. Lastly, did you know that CBG can impact the body by increasing anandamide levels? Anandamide is a naturally occurring cannabinoid that helps with the regulation of biological functions like sleep, memory, pain sensations, and appetite. This is crazy. It just keeps going. Overall, not only does CBG contain a plethora of medicinal properties, but it can also have a positive impact on people's lives. Whether you currently experience health issues or not, this cannabinoid shows a significant potential in helping treat different conditions, diseases, and illnesses. I just got to say one thing. What? Oh. That's it. Mother. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need to know. I've been we've talked about CBG a bunch of times on this show. I've taken CBG uh edibles out there and some of them work really well, like really well. And uh so I've been saying for a long time I want to smoke a strain that has more of the cannabinoids in there and this is one that I want. I want 15-20% CBG. CBG. Yes. Give it to me. Give it to me. Because I've always said I don't always have to smoke THC. Right. I would like to smoke something that's very low in THC, like 2-3%, but give me that 15-20% yeah. CB, CBG or whatever the hell you called it, HBC, A, yeah. HBJ. A, B, C, D, e, F, G. <laughs> I don't even know what I was talking about. <laughs> Big girl. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm excited. I want to see it. Give me more. Give me more. So... The vibes are off. If I were to search my phone, this is the, the the article, for the most sent and received phrases during 2022 would almost certainly be the vibes are off. And this is written by Jackie Bryant. I struggled for a minute thinking about what the end of the year digest should say. Typically, year end missive uh, is considers what has happened while offering a forward-looking view? One that's hopefully positive. I hate to kick a horse while it's down, which in that case is the wider cannabis industry and culture. But the truth is, shit sucks right now. It'd be putting lipstick on a pig to pretend otherwise. So basically, I'm here to commiserate with everyone. Wall Street guys are pissed. Uh, usually when the culture is upset, it's because of dynamics that have big business grinning while the little guys get crushed. In the current climate, everyone is hurting. Hmm. 
The main reason they're so pissed is because of repeated stalling of legislative actions at the federal level. Yeah, if you're looking at stocks right now from the cannabis industry, holy, since COVID, I mean, I've seen some companies that were up in the $10. Now they're like under a dollar. Leafly, at one point, when they came out, they were like eight bucks. They're now like under a dollar. Hmm. They're a penny stock again. It's brutal. So, I mean, without the banking, everybody who's putting their money in the cannabis is taking it out because it's not doing them any good because the Safe Banking Act. So, the bad news for everyone is, uh, but things are infinitely worse for those on the ground, especially growers in California, because once again, experiencing oversupply. Now with a bumper crop to boot, worsening the already severe problem exacerbated by high taxes. Growers in such states uh, as California, Colorado, Michigan, and Washington are already seeing rock-bottom wholesale prices. Yeah, you can go to Michigan right now, fucking right over to Border and Buchanan, get fucking $65, $70 fucking ounces at a dispensary. An ounce? An ounce. Remember I told you in Oklahoma, it was a guy selling $25 ounces. Yeah. So... Because there's just so much. That's where you're just selling volume. Yeah. You'll sell pounds that way. It's just like the guys selling fucking dime bags back in the day for, for five, ten bucks. Right. You got to sell a lot of them, make some money, but you're selling volume. You're eventually going to make money. It's just going to take you, it's just going to, you guys have to sell a lot. Mm-hmm. So, um, so in New York, which just began legal adult use sales, operators ha- scrambling to keep up with every shifting legislation to get the recreation, uh, recreational legal mom- uh, moment. They finally got one open, <laughs> and it was like I heard like ninety five dollar eighth or some shit like that. They're buying at that one dispensary right now, <laughs> ninety five bucks for an eighth. <laughs> oh god. Jeez. Workers aren't doing much better. Layoff uh, at companies like Dutchie, Weed Maps, Leafly, Cure Leaf, True Leaf, the parent company, uh, Leaf Link, and many more abound. One worker died at a True Leaf processing facility in Massachusetts that was all over the fucking place. Who knows how many other casualties there'll be in grayer segments of the market. As for the culture, it's hard to uh, argue that the mood is anything but down. Attendance at big events that attract more than just suits. <laughs> Like Hall of Flowers or the Emerald Cup Harvest Ball was lighter this season. Folks just don't have the cash or are busy putting out literal and perivial fires. A mold scandal affected a new grower's focused cannabis co- uh, competition in Oklahoma. Great. And so on. Uh, many players are dropping out of the legal market. Some uh, unable to survive while others lose their taste for the rat race. Others in the traditional market... Finally, someone wrote it in their article. Fucking great. Uh, traditional market. Uh, gave up. Every time I use that, people laugh at me. And I'm like, well, it's all we know. And, right. they, and they look at you and they're like, fucking, I love it. It's brilliant mm-hmm. that you they, call they, it that. Like they, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh. yeah. Um, market gave up on legal one years ago and some never even tried to join up, sensing that it would likely go sideways. So... Now, on the other long time, pot advocates are abandoning support for certain aspects of legalization based on well-founded fears that the market is headed toward an inevitable monopoly. Of course, we've talked about this. Jane Gibson asks, is legal weed doomed to be run by big business? If you don't see that, you're a fool. In her Vox piece, she reports that activists and advocates, including some from normal, find that certain laws will just be twisted to suit the needs of corporations like the uh, aforementioned safe banking measure or efforts to reschedule cannabis at the federal level. She details the efforts by organizations like Nonprofit Coalitions for Cannabis Policy, Education, and Regulation, it's called CPEAR, whose goal is to advance a comprehensive federal regulatory framework for cannabis. She mentions the group is funded by tobacco and alcohol brands like Altera, the parent company of Philip Morris USA, the Molson Coors Beverage Company, Constellation Brands, the conglomerate behind Corona, Modelo, and the National Association of Convenience Stores, among others. (laughs) Of course. I have something to say to that, but I'll wait. But the diehards persist as they always have. Grassroots, even like Trans Bay Challenge, the New York Growers Cup, and Ego Clash are still well attended, representing the OG culture segment that won't fold regardless of whatever legalization hurls its way. The people are still imbibbing as they always have. I found while reporting for the New York Times earlier this fall, making the most of time honored practices, accessibilities, and market challenges be demand. There's hope there for sure, however niche it may be. Okay, I'm going to say something real quick. And this I've said it before, and I'll say again, this is reminding me so much of the craft beer industry. You had, back in the 70s, like 
five beers you can buy, and one of them was called Beer, and it was a white label you buy on the fucking shelf. There's pictures of it. Look it up. Called Beer. There was, like, f- fucking no beer to buy, okay? Then you had a little bit of of 90s, right around when the Internet started making its way, uh, like 99, 98, 99, craft beer, boom, 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 tried to make a play. They got shot down, and it went away for a while, just like the Internet took a beating. The Internet went crazy in 99 and fucking, you know, kind of took a little shit and then it went back up again craft beer came along where you really start seeing the big west coast is always different michigan is different too when it comes to craft beer they've done it and kept on doing it uh the west coast but what you saw is all of a sudden mid 2000s let's say like 2004 2005 you started seeing people drink bringing different beers into bars a little bit like you saw a lot of belgium styles but like doubles and and quads and like real dark heavy beers you start seeing going holy fuck there's like something out there by 28 2009 you started seeing now like a little bit more craft beer and you started seeing it take away tap handles from some of the big dogs that have been around for a long time and then you saw craft beer really fucking banging by 2015 and there were specifically craft beer bars right like no domestic and then the first craft brewery sold to a big conglomerate. <clears throat> and everything went downhill from there. But what took over from that, from the big craft beer players, okay, was this. You had the little nano breweries opening up in your neighborhood mm-hmm. that were brewing good beer. I wouldn't say it's great. It's just good, solid beer that was in your neighborhood. And they're not selling. The, that's a guy or a gal or a person or a human being. 25 years, they'll keep that bar and then give it to their head brewer. You, I'm retiring and yeah. move on. Yeah. You know, and this is where I see and hope, and I want to do this for our, for you and I. This is my goal, too. When it goes federally legal, I want to start my own little cannabis brand. Small, 50 plants, specially grow, done on a little farm, you come and visit us, you experience cannabis in a way, you're gonna see, I think, if it goes federally legal and the states really loosen up, you'll start seeing little grow places, like Mm -hmm. a thousand square foot with 10 plants and it's just for that bar and you come there and you, and you, that's your neighborhood place to go and you can go there and smoke, you can have a beer, a pint and a smoke, because that eventually will happen too. Okay, Mm -hmm. and then you can take your eighth home with you if you want and smoke it at your house or like you pick farms, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You go. Right. And this is where you're going to see the little guy versus the big guy. And you'll have 60 percent of the business will go to the big conglomerates because people can get it out at fucking one of the big stores like Target or Walmart or fucking or fucking uh Wally's or whatever the fuck Wana is whatever the fuck it's called those uh, mobile gas stations Wawa's. Wawa's thank you you know you'll see it there and those people will buy it and there's nothing wrong with that I, it's gonna be dog shit but <laughs> people will buy it because they'll get it for 10 bucks for a fucking eighth and they'll do like a pack of cigarettes and they'll It'll take it home serve a purpose for and people. you'll see them in fucking packs marble packs eventually and it's gonna happen so but the true people that have been smoking weed forever, the true people that love weed, they're passionate, they they will not shop there. It's going to be about 40%. And those people that took advantage of having the small grows are going to be in business for 25, 30, 40 years and leave it to their family. And they're going to pass on. And then it'll be a family-owned run, little coffee shop, fucking cannabis shop that is going to be in business forever. Because it'll be your neighborhood spot. Mm -hmm. And you know where that weed's coming from. You know how they're growing it. Right. Because it's all being shown to you in a little fucking 1,500-square-foot place with a room in the back to grow. That's my prediction. I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow. I'm not going to say it's going to happen the next day. You will see it, though. Eventually. Yes. So that's my take. Good article, though. People out there in the world, if you have children, (laughs) please, 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 please... If you cannot handle your weed responsibly, lock it in a fucking safe and get it out. Don't leave it on the counters. I'm not talking about your 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 fucking flour. I'm talking about your edibles. I 
showed this article on my story and stuff like that. I got a lot of responses on it. Mrs. Weedman, tell us about why more children are ingesting cannabis than before. Yeah. The number of American children accidentally ingesting cannabis edibles has risen nearly 15-fold in the past few years as more states have legalized the recreational use of cannabis, a published scientific study showed. In 2017, just over 200 children aged 5 or younger consumed a food product infused with cannabis, a tally kept by the health officials showed. Compared with more than 3,050 cases in 2021, uh, the study in the Medical Journal of Pediatrics said. So, 2017, 200 kids. Uh, 2021, 3,050. Big difference. Often sold in the form of candy, chocolate, or cookies, edibles look appealing to children, but can cause serious harm because of their smaller size and weight. While no deaths were reported in about 7,000 cases of such ingestions by children over the five-year period of the study, about 8% of children required admission to the intensive care care unit, while nearly 15% were hospitalized. The median age of the affected children was three. The children's symptoms included depression of the central nervous system, including falling into a coma, tachycardia, and vomiting. They were usually treated with intravenous fluids. When the study began in 2017, recreational cannabis was legal only in eight U.S. states plus Washington, compared with 18 at the end of May of last year. These increases are believed to be associated with more states allowing adult recreational use of cannabis, the authors of the study wrote. With more than 90% of ingestions occurring at home, researchers called for educating caregivers on their need to store cannabis products in locked containers in a location unknown to children. I think if I could just butt into that story, if your kids are at an age where you can talk to them about it, or maybe... They, it doesn't matter what their age is, right? Maybe you're raising your kids in a household that you freely talk about cannabis. I yeah. have, I have a niece who raises her son, and he knows that what cannabis is. He knows the benefits of cannabis, and what, he's actually seen my plants. Yeah, his, yeah. his mother wanted him to see him the to plants. See it, yeah. Yep. So that's he is the first generation really that's going to be raised in a society where cannabis is is openly talked I about. Just right. Read, I just read. A, uh, some stuff about this. I'm going to get that articles for you next time on yeah. the next episode. Yeah. So oh, keep on, keep on yeah. going though. So, so just saying that, um, their theory in this article is to lock everything up and put it away. But in the chance that what, if you don't, I think that there's, it's more important to be open and educate your child. Yeah. Like this is mom's medicine. It looks like your candy. Be- I think that that's a problem too, that they, that's mostly traditional market edibles that look like, no, uh, because in, could, in the regular in the in the uh, rec market, there was a lot of people making edibles that looked like regular. Gu- but they don't make like gummy bear shapes they anymore. They, they did. They did, but a, a lot of the ago. states right. uh, said no more. No more. Some <clears throat> states still allow right. it, but some states right. are. Psh, but even it. just a little rectangular gummy can look like a piece of candy, right? right. And so, the packaging shows signs on there like the cannabis, the leaf with right. the the X through it, that kind of thing. I think it's more than just locking stuff up and putting it away. It's also educating your kids when they see this candy they have, or when they look at candy. If it's not where the candy belongs, they need to ask permission to have it, or you have to educate them on what what it is that's in there. Right. Anyway, that's. I mean, it's just changing times, right? So it's happening more frequently because cannabis is more openly in yes. people's homes. Yes, people just probably leave it on their counter. Right. So not only should cannabis products be placed in child-resistant packaging, but they should be in an opaque package with simple labels, the authors wrote. In addition, there should be clear warning against labels. um, There should be clear, I'm sorry, clear warning labels on the product cautioning against excessive use. And maybe that's it too. Maybe edibles don't look like a candy wrapper. Most states have that on there though. Right. You know, harmful Yes. You know, whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. All that warnings, oh, that, warning yes. labels all over them. So, right. I just think that responsibility is it's still as much as it is like, hey, it's just cannabis. I'm going to keep it on my counter. If you have small children and they see something that you eat often and it looks appetizing, 
especially if it's something sweet. They might get extra curious. Of course. When you're not around. Come on. Yeah. Here's the other thing. How many, uh, this, the, I, I need to research a study on how many children get into their parents' alcohol every year. Yeah. I've never looked at that That's always up. been a thing. Right. How many, pe- how, they don't show that anymore. Right. When was the last time you saw on the news uh, a, a five-year-old got into his parents' liquor cabinet and drank all the bottle of vodka? Right. What it t- happens. Right. It's happened. Mm-hmm. But you don't see it anymore. You don't right. even hear about it. Because it, alcohol is so non-stigmatized mm-hmm. to most people. Right? Yep. Yep. So right now there are no laws regarding how cannabis has to be packaged. Um, nothing that is n- nationwide. No, so every state has their every own Every state law. has their own yeah. laws. And uh, so it's a work in progress. But definitely... I guess a conversation as a fam, like as a husband and wife or spouses, or, you know, whatever way that your relationship works, you talking with somebody, the other persons that are involved in you raising your children or child and come up with some sort of game plan. If you're going to have cannabis in the house, you got to have a plan for how your kid doesn't get it. Right. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember as a kid, that wasn't even edibles. It was just weed. Like, right. all of my friends knew, my friends whose parents smoked, the kids knew. They would, like, you know, oh, look at, come in my mom's closet. I want to show you this box. And then they <laughs> open the box up, and there's, like, you know, a couple joints and, and, and some And the funny thing, flour. most of the parents and, never knew that you went and looked in right, the, the shoebox. Right. And they you're were just, smoking. like, fascinated, like, ooh, right. wow. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then you put the box back on the shelf and you leave the closet. Right. The thing is, nowadays, but, though, because it's, gummies and chocolate bars and whatever you need to put it fucking somewhere where they can't get to it or you need to put it in a fucking lockbox yeah because they're not going to taste that it is they're not going to taste the cannabis right. in it right right any any kid can I mean, get if it they anything. if they eat it it's not like they're gonna be like oh this is disgusting and spit it out it tastes just the most child proof box or whatever a kid's gonna want to get into it they're gonna get into it and cut it they're gonna do whatever they want. <laughs> if it's even if it's a metal tin, yeah. they'll fucking. Take You've their... seen the the little experiment. It was a, probably a TikTok thing for a minute too, and it. Um, I think it started on like some sh- like sixty minutes or something like that. It was like a, a study, but they take like a favorite candy for most kids, gummy bears, right? And little kids under five are sitting. They're probably like two, three, four, right? And there could be. A kid, there could be a couple kids. It depends because it, this became like a viral sensation right. too. So I think I've seen it, or yeah. Um, so you put you know three or four pieces of gummy bear in front of the kids, and you're like, okay, don't eat that candy. I'm gonna be back in two minutes, and when I come back, you can have it. But you just just leave it there, and like real casually, like yeah. you're not really explaining why. Like just leave those candies there. Don't eat them. And and then you they keep the camera on the kids while the parent is gone for the two minutes and then like they'll call out from the other room like don't eat the candies, don't eat them and the kids are like looking at each other or if it's one kid, like you you, you could just see it's like paining them. Oh yeah, like and then not one eventually this. does it. Yeah, so and then the others follow suit. Yeah, so picture that with right. Yeah, with hundred percent. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> Connecticut's first adult use cannabis shops officially opened today, and today is Tuesday, January 10th, official day. Congratulations, Connecticut. Awesome. Medical cannabis on the agenda for South Carolina, possibly for 2023. Now, I've talked about South Carolina in the past, uh, last year, about wanting to be it, so we'll see what happens. I fucking would love to go to South Carolina and smoke some weed. Iowa, which we never talk about. Our friend Paula lives out in Iowa, and... uh, they have a cannabis program that continues to rise, and it was ten million dollars in sales last year. Hmm. That's how small. Imagine if they had full medical program; they'd be in the thirty-five, forty millions. I bet. Oh yeah. I think there's only like four dispensaries in in Iowa, five medical dispensaries in Iowa. So imagine if they had like twenty-five, thirty. Hmm. Oh my gosh! So crazy, little, little Iowa man. Come on. Petition aims to put recreational cannabis to Florida voters in 2024. We'll see. Should have had it done a couple of years ago and you fucked up. <laughs> you missed it by like 2%. Two. Ohio governor signs bill letting cities grant mass cannabis expungements, among other reforms. Good for, good for Ohio. That's awesome. <laughs> 
Minnesota lawmakers unveil revised cannabis legalization bill with committee hearings scheduled next week. All right. They want reform. They want to get it going. Let's go, Minnesota. Kentucky governor calls on lawmakers to pass medical cannabis legalization this session in annual speech. He said he's going to need help from some of the people on the right, some of the people on the left to get this done, but he believes that they can get it done this year. Let's see. Cannabis sales in Illinois hit record $1.5 billion in 2022, despite a little bit of a slowdown, but December of... 2022 was the biggest year, 140 million, I believe. Jeez. That was bigger than Fourth of July week, uh, July month, and last year's December. Crazy, fucking 1.55 billion. I mean, insane. Uh, what was this? Oh, they're gonna do uh, 475, 79 million in taxes. <laughs> Oh no! Sales of out-of-state residents again accounted for nearly four hundred seventy-nine million. Tax revenue was four hundred thirty-five million. <laughs> Jeez, four hundred thirty-five million dollars. A lot of the million big dollars in taxes. The big operations though are saying that don't be fooled. They're not making bank yet. They're just not at that point where they're Ooh, ma- the taxes? The dispensaries. Oh, I know that. The cultivate like the yeah. cultivators. But the, the taxes right. the state's making. The state is making the most four hundred and thirty five million dollars. This year, last year they did fucking three hundred and thirty million or some shit like that. Where I wanna know why isn't this fucking whole entire state spotless? Yeah, right. We need a whole new infrastructure. Why isn't everything being rebuilt? They're saying they were supposed to put money in the poor communities. Why isn't every house being rebuilt? $435 million. And 25 or 30% of it's supposed to go to help the poor communities. Why aren't they fucking... Why is everything still shit? I don't know. There needs to be an investigation. Where is this money going? I want to see fucking them fucking throw it out. Oh my gosh. Mm. Prisker touting. We got cannabis done in 2022. Dude, you you, you suck. <laughs> so uh but they're talking about they're talking about bringing uh uh psychedelics on the ballot now here in Illinois. Hmm. So they can make you know how much money they'll make off that too. Oh yeah. <sighs> Forget about it. Massachusetts adult use cannabis sales have nearly reached 4 billion since launching in 2022. Just fucking crazy. Crazy, crazy amounts of money. Finally, in Detroit, recreational cannabis sales begin. Can you believe it? Michigan's been legal now for a while, and Detroit is like took this long since 2018. They've been legalized, and it took Detroit. They still had their medical dispensaries in there, but it just now, after all this time, because they couldn't get their shit together. Terrible. I posted this the other day, and a lot of people responded, and uh, I appreciate the comments on this. And this is the Arizona Supreme Court rules medical cannabis use during pregnancy is not child neglect. Ms. Yeah. Wee Man? This is a big one. I mean, it's it's a big topic. It's controversial. Um kind of goes hand in hand with that. You know, if a doctor gives you the medicine in his office and it's a pharmaceutical and it gives you all sorts of side effects that is acceptable while you're pregnant. If it is needed for you to function, right. For whatever your ailment is, but cannabis is the illicit drug. There's not enough research it can affect the baby. And so it's a problem. Okay, so Arizona Supreme Court rules that it is not considered child neglect. Very big deal. Um, They ordered the removal. The Arizona Supreme Court ordered the removal of a woman's name from the state's child abuse registry after it became public that she had consumed medical cannabis during her pregnancy. What happened? Lindsay Rigel was combating morning sickness and nausea during her pregnancy with medical cannabis. Although Rigel argued that she had a medical marijuana card issued by her doctor in 2019, the State Department of Child Safety, or DCS, decided to place her name on the agency's central registry 
after her newborn tested positive for cannabis, reported a local news outlet. Rigel, who works for DCS at the time, or she was working for DCS at the time of her pregnancy, ironic, as a result of the department's decision, Rigel found herself accused of child neglect. She also said that later she had a hard time finding a job. DCS employers use the registry as part of their background check on staff who work with vulnerable children and adults. Neglect and abuse charges can trigger a person's placement on this confidential registry. In addition, anyone placed on this list is doomed to remain on it for 25 years, which has prompted critics to label it as a blacklist. That's for sure. However, the state's Supreme Court not only declined to accept an appeal from the DSC, which failed to garner support last April from the Court of Appeals, the three-judge panel found Rigel's cannabis use was lawful and did not amount to child neglect. Quote, It's so magnificent. My client has been suffering for four years, fighting the uncertainty of this case, Rigel's attorney, Julie Gunnagill, said. While other states have medical marijuana issues related to child welfare cases, none of them have won a court ruling as clear as that handed up by the Arizona Court of Appeals, Gunnigal added. The appeals court also noted that Arizona's Medical Marijuana Act says cannabis use, quote, must be considered the equivalent to the use of any other medication under the direction of a physician, and concluded Rigel did nothing wrong. Now, you might be asking, how safe is cannabis during pregnancy? Well, women have been taking cannabis to alleviate nausea and vomiting associated with morning sickness, stimulate appetite, and calm anxiety and depression for decades by some accounts. While some studies confirm these these benefits, other studies and medical professionals discourage cannabis use due to the risk of fetal developments. Dr. Joseph Morgan, professor of cannabis education at the University of the Sciences in Philadelphia, said many factors like the dose, method of administration, and the parent's genetics can affect the safety of cannabis use during pregnancy. Morgan also recommends taking your ob uh, or talking to your ob if you're thinking of using cannabis while pregnant. So, Or we just read about CBG. Yeah, yeah. You could, eventually, you could probably take it just a straight CBG gummy. Is it just the psychotropic part of cannabis that? That's what is they talk a, about. A, an issue yeah, they don't with talk fetal about, development. They don't ever talk. They don't have any studies on on any of the other cannabinoids. Right. When it comes to not that I know of. Not anyway. on fetal on right. Pregnancy. But as you see, CBG doesn't give you the psychoactive effect. It doesn't, and you don't have to smoke it. You can just probably find a straight gummy, a straight CBG gummy. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, you read all about that. Didn't say anything about not hurting you, right? So, international news. Ten things tourists need to know about cannabis in Thailand. Crazy over there, and they're still trying to figure out what the fuck's going on, changing the law-wise and stuff like that. But Thailand's crazy cannabis laws can be difficult to navigate, says the Ministry of Public Health. Uh, there's 10 things tourists need to know. One, carrying seeds or parts of the cannabis plant from and to Thailand for personal use is not permitted. Cannabis cultivation is legal, but registering in the uh, in the Food and Drug Administration, Pluk Ganja app is required. Using cannabis flower buds for research, export, sale, and processing for commercial purpose requires a permit. Individuals under 20 years old, pregnant women, and breastfeeding women are not eligible to use cannabis except under the supervision of a health professional. Well, that's kind of cool. Possession of an extract containing more than 0.2% THC and synthetic THC requires permission. Dishes containing cannabis are available in authorized restaurants. Awesome. Approved cannabis health products are accessible through specific channels. Smoking cannabis in public places, including school and shopping malls, is illegal. Uh, Avoid driving under after consuming cannabis. Those who have serious, it just says avoid. (laughs) Uh, Let me read this a little more about it. Cannabis may impair judgment, motor, yeah, whatever. Uh, Avoid driving after. It doesn't say it's illegal though. Just says avoid. Hmm. So 
uh, avoid getting caught. Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, high? <laughs> <laughs> Those who have serious, undesirable outcomes from consuming cannabis should seek medical help. <laughs> Those are the 10 things that Thailand, you need to know when you go there about cannabis. Uh, U.S. Virgin Islands uh, lawmakers passed cannabis legalization bill and was waiting for uh, them to sign it. It's awesome. Good for you. Guess where we're going to go for a vacation one day? The U.S. Virgin Islands. That'd be great. And smoke some big fat doinks on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> so they're supposed to finalize the bill. Regulation still is to come, though. You know how that works. They pass it. But look at New York. They pass it. It takes a year for them to get all the fucking shit wrote. So they should have it all done and then just pass it. And it's ready to go. Oh, my gosh. Just why doesn't it's log logic does not work in this world, does it? Nothing logical is actually right. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it seems that way. Yeah, right. <laughs> so we've talked to Big Earl about this a couple times when he's been on the show and also just in person on the phone. But uh, he's always said you can grow weed as in your window as a house mm -hmm. plant if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. So I, I and Mrs. Weedman said she has wanted to try this. So I have that, been wanting to try this. Right. So thank so you I for did, this article. Because you are a flower kind of sewer. You like your you like your plants. A plant. You're a planner. You mm -hmm. like plants. You have plants all over the fucking house. Everywhere mm -hmm. I looked, there's a plant. Plant, 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 plant. <laughs> I even have plants in the studio now. It's yes. great. I love it. Plants bring fresh air, clean air. It's great. Mm -hmm. You feel for fresh. They bring life. They give you life. It's awesome. So you're a plant person. You, Polly, Shoddy, and O-Dog. You guys- mm -hmm. you, you got our plants. Yeah, you peeps love your plants. Yeah, this is cool. And funny that you, um, that I'm reading this article tonight because I was, I wanted to have in the studio a- um, a cannabis plant, a cannabis plant. I can't get my words out, but I wasn't sure if it would grow. I thought maybe it's too dark down here, not enough sunlight. And then I thought, um, I'll get a fake one. And the options for a fake cannabis plant are very few and they're really expensive. So I'm at Target. I run into Target today. And what do I see? I'm like, is that a fake <laughs> cannabis plant like a floor it's a floor plant it's as tall you as should, me i'm looking eye to eye with this thing it's like a mini tree you should post it and, and see what people think i will post it because i had to actually look at the tag like what are they calling this because i counted the leaf. It, it had seven leaves on the little stem i'm like this is totally cannabis and they're getting around it by calling it a maple do like Very the cannabis do like yeah. a thing where it it's a like cannabis plant Maple plant yeah, and see what people and see pick. what everyone says. It's pretty funny. So let's get to the article. You can actually grow weed as a house plant. Go figure. As cannabis continues to emerge from the haze of prohibition, you can start you can expect to start seeing it just about everywhere, provided you live in a state where it's legal for recreational use, that is. One place it has always belonged, but not often occupied for various reasons, from the threat of law enforcement to theft to narc neighbors, is a loving, south-facing window of your home, doing its natural thing. Well, there's no longer a benefit to continuing the hush-hushed nature of producing and consuming cannabis. The less stigmatized it becomes, and the more access we create for each other, the less of a chokehold the emerging commercialized industry will have on our purse strings, cultivar popularity, and innovation itself. Openly growing weed in your home rather than in a closet or specifically designated area is an act of defiance of both pervasive anti-cannabis norms and the proliferation of weed millionaires who will cozy up to politicians while tens of thousands of people remain in prison for being caught with the drug. Think of it as a not-so-subtle plea for normalization. But keeping a live cannabis plant in your home can serve many other purposes too, even if it's just decor. Without too much effort, you can absolutely get flowering buds on a plant that you've grown yourself, but don't expect the yield of a professional-grade grow benefiting from either full sun or supplemental lighting. Before you think of how to physically approach growing the cannabis plant, you have to consider if it aligns with your needs and environment as one should when consuming it. Cannabis author Menle Goloke Agre says your intention should be to aim for lovely flower, which is the plant's primary purpose. 
But as she told Lifehacker via email, growing weed as a houseplant is an entirely different experience than any other because it fruits and f- its fruits and flowers are still a federally illegal substance in the United States. However, the experience of growing weed doesn't differ from growing a fig or lime tree. At the end of the day, you get to enjoy the delicious fruit it bears. A cannabis plant is more like an annual tomato vine than a monstera. Conditions and care will determine a lot, and it won't live past a certain life cycle. It's a bummer that you can't count on the plant to keep producing bud forever. But as California-based seed and clone champs Purple City Genetics COO Melanie Nash tells us, you're not getting wonderful flowers to consume from your tropical plants. Isn't that a good point? Yeah. Nash offers some advice on growing on your sun porch versus in a grow tent. Cannabis is a beautiful, fast-growing plant. The easiest way to grow it is is as a house plant is to grow feminized auto flower seeds. This type of cannabis doesn't require a special light cycle and stays on the smaller side. It can be grown in a window or on a patio in a two or three gallon pot very easily and treated pretty much the same as other house plants. This plant will start flowering after about 30 days and be ready for harvest at 60 to 70 days from germination. The right way to grow weed indoors, according to Agre, growing indoors gives you a deeper understanding of the plant as you'll be engaging with it on a daily basis. But she notes, this doesn't mean you have to go out and buy fancy grow lights and equipment. It does mean that you should learn everything you can about the strain you're growing and how best to grow it. Just because it's for looks doesn't mean it can't have fire buds, Agri adds. Even if you're growing cannabis as a house plant for the sake of its aesthetic, it can still be a beautiful and strong plant with an abundant yield. While you don't have to run an entire fertilization program, Purple City's Nash offers this tidbit. Nutrients added to the soil will improve the quality of the flower that is produced, but aren't absolutely necessary to grow a nice plant. Starting with a rich soil mix or soil with a time-release fertilizer is the easiest way to improve flower quality. For those in states with fully legal adult use grow programs like California, Nash suggests a few of their offspring. Uh, Purple City Genetics autoflower seeds like Saltwater OG or Raspberry Gas Tank are easy to grow and produce nice flowers with THC in the mid-20% range. If you want to grow from a clone, a nice indica cultivar like Zev, which is a purple kush mixed with uh, gush mints, uh, that stays on the smaller side and is a good option. Solange, Bur- Solange Burnett, co-founder of Humble Bloom and Honey Pot, recently wrapped up a tent grow and decided to plant one autoflower clone front and center with her home's other plant residents. As an advocate for the plant and its culture, this was special for Burnett. For the first time, I'm growing. I'm going to grow weed like any other plant and have it on display in my living room, she says. I'm excited to experiment, prune playfully, and joyously share my weed anti-energy with anyone who happens to enter my home. With this policy shift in a previously prohibited t- state like New York, where Burnett is based, folks like her can access cannabis more easily, affordably, and most importantly, without fear. Home grow is legal in New York City with a medical license, so I'm ready to spark casual cultivation conversation, normalizing weed as just a plant amongst others while soaking up the mental benefits of plant care, she says. It's truly a privilege to steward growing green and breaking oppressive stigmas with the intersections of my identity as a black woman with this healing plant, which has criminalized and harmed so many of our people. Even in the odd weed plant or two, even if the odd weed plant or two ends up in the bay window lineup in a city near you, until it's entirely free from the last century's bans, restrictions, and other challenges, cannabis will never be just another plant. Cool. You're gonna try. I'm gonna. I'm growing a plant. You are. I heck yeah, I am. Nice. Yeah. I've seen people do do uh, miniature bonsai. Yeah, plants. why not? 
That's pretty dope, but small. Bonsai? Do Bo- I have to say that every time? It's bonsai. Bonsai. That's Mr. Mr. Miyagi said it that way. <laughs> Daniel said, send bonsai, and he goes, bonsai. bonsai. That's Daniel's it. Daniel's son. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to see you grow a little little house plant, a little, little canvas plant. I'm going to do I, it. And I like this article because she she sounds like you, like when the way you talk about cannabis, you know, stomping the stigma and you know breaking this, uh, breaking like the 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 uh, freeing the plant and and all that stuff, which and making it normalize. Yep. You know, so kind of what your brand stands for. That's right. You know, so I I, I like uh, what was her name again? Uh, so how do you pronounce it? Salon 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 J Burnett. Burnett. Nice. Nice. So great, great. Uh, Solange. Burnett? Yes. Great talk on there. So on that article. So uh, well, uh, Miss Weedman will post that one too. So you can get a look on that. So man, Miss Weedman, that's another end of the show. Mm-hmm. Man, that hour went quick. It did go fast. Pretty I'm stoned. Ready to smoke some more. Oh, I cannot wait to smoke some more of that strain. <laughs> Big girl, thank you for that one. That's a good Nightmare one. OG. If you thank can you, find it, you. I, I uh, highly suggest you try it. Really nice, because uh, I was talking to uh, uh, we did the the grow hour yesterday, and I was talking to Big Earl, and uh, I was telling how much I love the lava cake, and I like the acai, and I like the happy hour. Happy hour was good too. Mm-hmm. We hadn't smoked a nightmare OG yet, and I was saving it for last. And uh, I was talking to him yesterday, so I'm super excited because yesterday during the show with him, I was smoking the Orange Soul again. I love that fucking strain too. So everything I've had from Big Earl is fucking amazing. So. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, this Nightmare OG is... I might smoke this on the show for the next couple shows. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's really good. It got me super, super body mellow. But I was still focused. I was still able to talk. I was still able to like clear-minded do what I needed to do to get the show done. I was kind of a little... Yeah, I didn't feel... At one like- point, I was a little... I, I'm so glad you went when you were talking about... Uh, um, the kid, uh, the kids eating edibles. Uh, I faded for a second. Mm-hmm. I start the 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 screen started getting colorful for a second there, and the the, the letters started crossing one another. I'm like, oh Had boy! A couple moments. I'm like, get my head straight, get back in the game <laughs> there. Nightmare OG ain't gonna get you. <laughs> That's why I don't think I took a third hit. I was like, oh, I think I better wait. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, Miss Wee Man, you got anything else to say? I'm ready to smoke some more, and I want you guys all to have a fantastic week. Everybody, every human being out there, have a fantastic week. Grow every- some weed smoke if you some can. Weed. Smoke some weed if you can. Put it on your windowsill. Put it on your window. Fuck. Fuck it. You're not going to grow some monster plant with monster buds, but you'll have some fun. Get to look at those beautiful leaves. See if you see an angel or two popping out. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, everybody out there in the world, thank you so much for listening to the show. We appreciate you all. We love you. Uh, Don't forget to check out 8decades.com. All of our bio, all of our handles, uh, everything is on there. So go check it out and uh, say hello to Mrs. Weedman on uh, her Instagram uh, at 8 Decades, right? At 8 Decades, yeah. So say hello to Mrs. Weedman out there. Uh, We love you all. Thanks for listening. As Polly always says, smoke smart. Puff, puff, and away. Puff, puff, pass.